So what were we talking about? Uh, we were we were about to compute um, this limit. <clears throat> uh, let me show you the limit again. So this was the limit. No, this wasn't it. It was negative infinity. So um, on Friday, we decided um, we decided that this is infinity this is confusing this is not something where I can just guess um, infinity minus infinity would be bad enough but then it's divided by infinity so that's like double the confusion. Um, and we also decided that one minus x, uh, the root of one minus x cubed roots looks like something like x to the three halves. Uh, because, well, because the one inside of there doesn't look important. This seems more important than x to the one. So I think the limit of the numerator is going to be infinity. And I think this limit is going to be zero because the, I have x squared in the denominator, but can't really be sure by looking at exponents because weird things could happen if there's roots and stuff over there. But anyway, since I think the leading term of, of the numerator is x to the three halves and the leading term in the denominator is x squared, I'm gonna divide by the smaller one of those. So I'm gonna divide by x to the three halves. So I wanna go take this fraction and divide the numerator and the denominator by x to the three halves. Hopefully, if I have a thing whose leading term is x to the three halves and I divide by x to the three halves, hopefully I'll end up with something that uh, whose limit is a constant. Um, in the numerator and then the denominator, I can tell it's going to go to infinity. So, um, well, I use the distributive law I know I'm supposed to divide each of the each of the summons by x to the three halves and that's where I left off. How do you decide what you're going to multiply by? Where well, you have one over x to the exponent of three over two, like how do you decide like what you're gonna multiply? My reasoning here was the top looks like x, x to the three halves and the bottom looks like x squared. So either of those would probably be a good idea to try. Uh, I I went with I like to go with a smaller one of those because uh, that way. Mm, that way, you should uh, approach a constant. It, it would be if I divide by x to the three halves, this should look something like one divided by x to the one half, which should go to zero. But I don't know that it's going to work until I do it. So this is my reasoning, but I I can't be sure until I I work through the whole thing because I don't know something might cancel unexpectedly. For example, you know. 
So I look at so basically look at what looks the biggest in the numerator and denominator, and then try and and see if it works. Okay. So um, so we left off here. We were trying to simplify this, and we were about to get confused. I don't think we got a chance to get confused. I mean, everything. Everything is clearly there's one thing that's more complicated than the rest, which is uh, somehow simplifying a root divided by x to the three halves. Okay, so first of all, I should say this is not. Oh, that's not what I I didn't copy right. Uh, this is not. Um, you, you can't just put something into the square root. That just doesn't work. Um, but I'm just going to say it in case you're tempted to do it. Is this algebra? I'm not sure. I know it's not correct algebra. Uh, maybe you have to maybe maybe incorrect algebra comes as algebra but either way it's not something we should be doing because it's gonna mess everything up in our lives even and like if we do that i don't think it's it's not even gonna it's gonna make the problem look impossible if we do that so um what we what we are supposed to do is use the the exponent laws that say that the root of a divided by the root of b is the root of um, roots distributed over products, because this is just a to the one half, b to the negative one half. Another way to write the same thing is like this: uh, a root is just an exponential with a with a one uh, exponential of one half. Um, and when you take a product to the same exponent, that's the same thing as taking the product of all the powers. So um, we, what we want to do is write the denominator as the root of something. So this is a very, this is a trick question. Basically, but what is the denominator the root of? I do want you to answer, but if you, you know, don't feel bad if you fall for the trick. It's not like I'm trying to trick you, it's just that to make one third squeeze minus oof I'm not sure I understand that formula. You wanna make so you wanna make the numerator into into a whole square. You need to put some brackets there, Dustin. I don't know. I don't know what you're trying to say. Okay, so like, um, if we do like what you were showing, and we want to make like the, and we want to do what you did with like the AB, we could do like, um, uh, like one over three over three, because we want it to be the same like denominator. And then since we know that x is going to be 3 over 2, to make it the same denominator, we can multiply 2 by 3 to get the, th uh, to get, oh, wait, what? I, I'm trying to understand. You said okay. 1 over 3? I make it like, oh, wait, no. I mean, like the exponents. Okay, like, you're talking about the exponent. So you're talking the exponent of the numerator or the denominator? Of the numerator. Okay. You know what? Uh, never mind. You're talking about uh, something like this? Yeah. So I think I'm not sure what you're trying to do. 
but I think you're trying to do something with these exponents and this minus. And powers and sums don't work well. They just, they, they don't, you know, for example, if you try to write this as one minus x cubed, that just doesn't, this doesn't work. This is, these are not the same. If that's what you're trying to do. You know, I mean, yeah. it's true that this yeah. is one cubed, but that doesn't get us anywhere. Well, no, like I was just saying, like, uh, if we do like one to the power three over three, that would be the same as one to the one, which would be one. Okay. And then what do I do with the second term? I was more so trying to make like the denominators match for the exponents. Okay, but you told me three over three, and here there's three over two. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess we could do the same to the bottom, maybe. I mean, okay. if you want it, we can make them match. We can make it two over two, and then everywhere there's going to be a two. Six over two is three. But I can't really do anything with that. Because again, this is not, this is, this doesn't work. Oh, well, I was more so trying to get that, okay, because um, with like the square root, if we like split it where it's like square root of one minus, you know, the square root of x to the third power, do like the three over two, and then try to make the all the denominators match. Well, I they, like in, in what I wrote, they do match, don't they? You just multiply times the square root to get rid of that square root in the numerator. Um, I, I see. Yeah, you you square root x. answer. So there's two more answers that I'm going to get to. Uh, I'm trying to go in order, but yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so. Justin, you're trying to make all the denominators match in the exponents, right? Yeah. So here, here they match. I just wrote three as six over two and one as two over two. Um, but the thing is, they match, but I can't do anything with it. Because there's a, basically because there's a sum. And, and I can't do, I have the root of something plus the root of something else. There, there's nothing I can do with that. Um, you try to do the root of four plus the root of nine, that is not the root of 13. This is two and this is three. And five is not the root of 13. Well, yeah, I get that. That's like, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, well, well what I'm saying is that I don't see what I could do with this. Well, like, cause like, with square root of one, it's the same thing as saying one over like uh, one over two, like one to like the square, like to the power of one over two. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm just trying to get up, I'm trying to say like that, trying to get rid of the square roots by doing that. Oh, you separate, could you also separate the square root? Like, oh no, you can't do that. Okay. I'm about to say the square root of one is just one. But I don't think you can separate it like that. Can you? Yeah, I mean, you can do that. The thing is, we could also, we could write the things in the square root as squares. That would work too. But that's not going to, we're going to have the same problem. There, there's a sum there that you can't do anything with. You could write this as this, I, uh, sorry, squared. So, this almost works. Um, but now you have squares instead of the square root, but they don't cancel because there's a sum. Uh, well, I was uh, said earlier, like multiply times the square root. Well, zero. The entire multiply okay. the square root times the square root. Okay. Okay. So let me go through the other ideas that we had uh, because there's two, two more in the chat. Um, so, um, Okay, I'm supposed to do this. Okay, so the first, the next thing that I had, uh, Matthew said, 
uh, square numerator and denominator. So, okay, that would get rid of the square root, but then it's a different function. So we have to be really careful with that. Um, actually, this would probably work, um, but, oh, no, because, I'm, this this makes it into a different function. This is not going to work because if you square, you know, you have you have three halves. If you square the numerator and denominator, you don't have three halves anymore. You have nine fourths. Um, three halves is one point five, and nine fourths is two point twenty five. You just changed it into a different problem. So we can multiply a fraction by a numerator, but the numerator and denominator by the same thing because that's multiplying by one. That doesn't do anything, but squaring does something, and we can't we can't uh, change it. You know, in an equation, you know, if you have x equals two, you could probably write you know that x squared equals four, but there that's different. I'm squaring both sides of an equation. Um, if I square both sides of an equation, it's going to stay equal. But that doesn't mean I can square a fraction. That's going to give me a different fraction. Does that make sense, Matthew? Multiply fraction times two. But that wouldn't get rid of the square root. Okay, I'm, I have to go through other ideas. Uh, I'm gonna leave Shelley's for the end because, well, because it's my favorite answer. Uh, Miles had an idea that if I understood correctly was multiply the num numerator and denominator by the same square root. That would get rid of the square root in the numerator. So we have the square root squared. Uh, that would be great. The problem now is that if I do this, I didn't make my life easier because I, I just got a square root in the denominator. So um, I didn't do anything wrong, but I didn't simplify this. Um, so I mean, how do we know? Because we tried. Um, it's the only the only way of knowing, really. Okay. So what I wanted to do was to write the denominator as a fraction. Uh, and and Shelby said. Multiply um, the, the uh, write this as the root of x cubed. So, well, this almost works. Um, this would work if the limit was as x was approaching negative infinity. But the thing is, mm, negative numbers are horrible, and this doesn't work because negative numbers are miserable. The moral, so here's what happens. Negative numbers are evil and they would try to kill you. Um, make x equals to two, to negative two, sorry. X is approaching negative infinity, so what I'm supposed to plug in here are negative numbers. If you make x equals negative two, then this is gonna be uh, the numerator is going to be called the root of seven, and the denominator is going to be the root of negative eight. Um, so, sorry, not seven, nine. So this is just three, but the but there's a negative square root in the denominator. And that just doesn't work. 
so what happened? What happened is that we accidentally tried to take the square root of a negative number. Um, if x is approaching negative infinity like it is, then the square root of x cubed doesn't make sense. Uh, so, oh, Shelby wrote root u of x squared. Okay, well, you you wrote a different thing, but I read, I, my mind read a, a different thing. So, um, you wrote x to the two thirds, um, not x to the three halves. Okay, so, um, we almost got it right, but the negative sign um, messed up our lives instead. Uh, so what we can do, well, one thing we could always do, so if we add this limit, uh, was x approaching negative infinity, uh, this function Oh, what the hell is in the denominator? X squared minus X plus one. So one thing we could do is just say that X is negative Y. And then everywhere that you see an, an X, just give everything a different letter. Everywhere you see an X, you replace it by a negative Y. So if, if X was negative, um, then Y is gonna be positive. And if X approaches negative infinity, y is going to approach positive infinity. And then we can think that y is a positive number and and life is going to be great. So that's one thing we could do. Uh, just, just avoid dealing with negative numbers. And, and it's going to be a very similar limit. Another thing we could do is, is be more careful and use the root of negative x cubed. So this is the root of of a, of a positive number. If x is negative, x cubed is going to be still negative because it has three, it contains three minus ones multiplied together. And then negative that is going to be positive, right? So x is negative. This means that the cube of a negative number is negative that the opposite of a negative number is positive. So I can take the square root of negative x cubed. Um, so if we, if we use this, we're actually, we're gonna be fine. So I'm gonna do that. Are there any, there should be questions, honestly. Negative numbers are, I, at least I find them confusing. I can see myself making this mistake um, on a, you know, I feel like this mistake, there's always a chance that I'm gonna make it because you see an X and you take a square root and you're like blindly pushing symbols. But the thing is, whenever you write a square root, you should be careful that you're writing the square root of a, the, the stuff inside of it could be negative, you know?
So everyone agrees that if x approaches negative infinity, that means that x is going to be negative. That means that I can't take the third, the three halves power of it. Uh, so then, whenever uh, like we deal with negative infinity, we could just set at like x to a negative, um, like a negative letter to make it positive infinity. Just like make turn the negative infinity into positive infinity. Pretty much, you can always do that. Yeah. Okay. What, what I did here, making x equals negative y. Um, yeah, the thing, you can always do that, but you have to be super careful because then you're sticking a bunch of negative signs there. And when you stick negative signs into formulas, you tend to make, it's very easy to make mistakes. So you have to be really careful with brackets. So this thing becomes, so now, for example, here, here I have a total of four negative signs. There's three that come with the y and, the, and then there's the extra one outside. So that is, um, so so that's an even number. That's going to be one plus y cubed. Here there's a negative sign and here we have a negative sign. You have to be very careful that with the fact that the negative sign comes with the x so it's inside of the square. If you put it outside then it's just everything's going to go to um, I'll believe him. Uh, everything is gonna, you're gonna get, get it wrong. So be very careful, put brackets everywhere, and then think about, um, be very careful with the negative signs. Uh, here there's two negative signs because it's inside of the brackets. Um, so this is y squared. And here there's two negative signs again. So this is Um, so this is what you should get. This is the limit you should compute, which looks almost the same. But now you can think that y is positive. And of course, it doesn't matter. The, the, the choice of letter doesn't matter. Choose your favorite letter. Um, I guess, I mean, probably still harder to make mistakes doing this than trying to use negative numbers, honestly. But anyway, I'm going to try because I started this way. Um, so, I have this limit. So, um, I have, this is the limit I was, I was doing, and I decided that it's not gonna, um, I, I want to multiply by something with a three halves exponent, but that's not gonna, that doesn't make sense unless I make a negative x to the three halves, um, because then I'm taking the square root of a positive number, and I'm doing the same thing. So many minus signs. So are we just completely disregarding what we did earlier? No, because it's going to be very similar. Um, so we can base our new work off of it, you know. It's just the same except for a little minus sign. Sometimes you're more unlucky than this and you do the work that you have to just throw in the trash. Okay, so uh, still, so I wanna simplify each of these things to something that makes some sense. So this, okay, so what I need to do is write the denominator as the root of negative x cubed. Um, Anything, anything to the three halves is always the, the root of uh, of the third power because you can just write a, a one half a, a one half as a root 
So now I have a root divided by a root. Now this works. Um, the root of a product is the product of the roots. And now I have, so, so now the root is basically not a problem, not a problem anymore because it's uh, everything is inside of it. So I can just, I'm not gonna ignore it. I'm gonna keep it there, basically not touch it. Uh, and now inside of here, I have a fraction. Um, well, maybe to get rid of the brackets, this is negative. So this has three minus signs. Um, so that's, uh, that's just the same with or without the bracket. And I have a, I have a fraction. I can use the distributive law. This is going to be one divided by negative x cubed uh, plus negative x cubed divided by negative x cubed. Fra uh, fractions with the same denominator, they add by just adding the numerators, right? If I, if I eat two fifths of the cake and you eat one fifth, um, combined we feed in three fifths. Um, and well, here I can just write this as well. This is one. Okay, so that's the the most complicated thing simplified. That looks like something I know how to take the limit off. So here, um, oof, these are. Not so simple. So I have to be careful with the signs. So the next term is x divided by negative x to the three halves. Um, and I, I would like to write that as, as um, well, a power of the same base. So I can add the exponents together. Right, I would like to go something like this. I would like to do this, but it doesn't work because there's not the same base on the numerator and the denominator, but that has an easy fix. Just make the numerator negative x by adding an extra minus sign. If I put two minus signs, that's the same as not doing anything. So that is, uh, well, one minus three halves, I guess, <clears throat> in the exponent. So that is negative x to the negative one half. Maybe the moral of today is that negative numbers suck. But also the moral is that if you're careful enough, uh, things do work out. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, can't fit anything on a slide. Okay, so that's the numerator. Um, I guess now we're gonna try with the denominator. So. This is the uh, this is the denominator. I think I hope. Oh, I just the previous line I completely forgot. You gotta divide everything by um, negative x to the three halves. Okay, so let's simplify this stuff. Oh my gosh. So many. Okay. So, um, this is, um, so this is similar to what I was just doing. I would like to have, um, x to the, I guess, negative x in the numerator to, just to be able to add the exponents together or subtract. So notice that x squared is the same thing as negative x squared. 
for the square, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. And here I can just write this as negative x to the one divided by negative x to the three halves. And here I'm not gonna do anything. So now I can add the exponents. Two minus three halves. Um, well, let's just write it out. Two minus three halves. Um, and then one minus three halves. And then I'm not just not going to do anything with it. So two minus three halves. Two is four halves. So this is one half. And this is negative one half. So, okay. The limit I, I, we started with. This limit after dividing by um, by negative x to the three halves, what we got <clears throat> in the previous page, uh, we said that the numerator, we can write as negative one over x cubed plus one minus negative x to the one half. That's it, right? Oh, negative x to the negative one half. I just copied it wrong. Oh my God. There's a negative exponent there uh, because this is where I computed the thing and they had a negative exponent. I just copied it wrong. Good thing this is not a blackboard now and I'm not erasing wrong computations. Life is great. We're doing great. Uh, plus x to the negative. So now I'm copying the, what I just got from the denominator, negative x to the negative one half, and negative x to the three halves. Okay. So all the negative x's are going to infinity because the x's are going to negative infinity. <clears throat> so this is one over infinity this is one over infinity. This is the same thing as one over x to the one half. A negative exponent is the same thing as a positive exponent in the denominator. And I know a positive exponent in the denominator gives me a one over infinity. So all this crap is going to zero. This is also going to zero. Um, so this limit in the numerator, I'm just getting one. And in the denominator, everything is going to zero, except for the square root of this number, which is the square root of something that approaches infinity. Um, and the square root of something that approaches infinity approaches infinity. So, uh, this limit is zero. So the numerator was kind of like x to the three halves, and I hoped that dividing by x to the three halves, I would get as a limit a number, and I, I did, I got lucky. The denominator was bigger than x to the three halves. I was hoping that it would still be infinite after dividing by x to the three halves, and it was. So my guesses were right. I, I got Kind of lucky. Okay, so this was a bit confusing. Um, the, I guess, I mean, if you want to avoid ne negative numbers, change the, the names of your letters uh, so that they're not negative numbers. But I think it wasn't as bad as it might seem. Um, it was just, I mean, sure, we had some wrong guesses. Um, that's just what life is. Any, any problem can be very long if you take a bunch of wrong guesses. Then you just plug it in the calculator until it goes to zero. Just check at the very least um, right now. That's a good idea. Um, so it was.
plus this um, plus plus x divided by x squared minus x plus 1. So notice this is only defined for numbers smaller than 1. As x gets bigger than 1, the stuff inside of the square root becomes negative. And now, ooh, it looks like it's going up here. 0 0.1.14, 0 0.19, 0 0.2. It keeps growing. Ooh, you see that approaching 0? The problem with limits is that it's hard to tell. Uh, I, I think it is approaching 0. Uh, but it, you know, that looks like it could be approaching zero or it could be approaching um, point 0.1, who knows? Just for, I mean, I know because we did the problem, we all know, and we did it correctly. But um, from the picture, it's hard to tell. Is this approaching zero? I mean, probably, but it could, what if it's approaching like something like 0 0.001. I mean, of course, calculators. It really does seem like it's approaching zero. Well, you can never be 100% sure with a calculator, but I'm like 99% sure and 100% sure based on the algebra. And I mean, you can find calculators that will give you the limit. Uh, from alpha. I, don't know. I mean, this is a paid software, but a lot of it is free. And I don't, you don't need to know the syntax because everything works. Uh, I mean, I know square root is SQRT, uh, but if you, I didn't know, I would write a power of one half. And now, as long as you're very careful with brackets, um, Sx, what do I write? Like an arrow? Negative infinity. Wait, so I, I'm checking here that I th this is the limit the limit I was I was trying to compute indeed, and it said it's zero. And um, this is not very trustworthy, and also something else to pay for. Uh, but this, the, the, the thing is, this is solving it using algebra. It's not doing it by, I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure this is solving it using algebra. And if you solve it using algebra, then you can be sure uh, that the answer is correct. It's not plugging a huge number and guessing. Um, but, um, I mean, the thing is, I don't know, I don't, I, like, the point is to learn, and if it just tells me the answer, I don't know what I learned. It's nice to check it, but I mean, most of your homework on web assign, you could also just plug zero and see if it tells you it's the correct answer or not, you know. And if you're doing the, if it's a written homework, I, I want to see the work anyway. And I want to ask you about it later. So, <clears throat> all right. Anyway, I think this problem might have seemed worse than it really is. Um, that's because, that's because uh, we tried a bunch of wrong things. That's just life. Um, math is mostly trying wrong things until something works and not understanding things for the longest amount of time until you understand them. Uh, I think if you go through it again, if you're feeling confused now, I think you'll probably go through it again. Or try to try to start over here. Try to start with this limit over here and, and do it from there and see if you get zero. It, it's going to be very similar, except with annoying minus signs, which is probably great. Um, okay. So that's going to be it for for limits. So so if you look in the book in section two point six, there's a part that says um, there's a part 
inside section 2.6, it's titled Precise Definition of Limits at Infinity. And I'm skipping that. That's similar to 2.4. Super interesting, super fun, super cool. Uh, but just kind of doesn't, doesn't really fit in this course that much. Feel free to read it. Feel free to ask me questions about it. So now we're moving on to 2.7. Um, which, whose title I forgot. But anyway, we're gonna talk about derivatives. Um, so from now on, we're done with limits, except that everything we're gonna do from for the rest of the semester uses limits everywhere. So does that mean we're done with limits? I don't know. You, you take it um, however you want. But we're gonna use limits to, uh, to interesting things. Can you use derivatives to find the limit Sometimes you can, uh, that's something we will see, but first we have to learn what a derivative even is. So, um, so back to finding a tangent. So I have, um, I have a, a graph. Or not a graph. Um, maybe I can. Maybe I have a some sort of curve that doesn't look like a graph. But even if it's not a graph, if I look at just this part, it, it is a graph of a function. But the red thing does pass the vertical line test, and I I could try to find the tangent anyway using the the graph. So I'm just going to look at graphs for this reason. I have a graph, and I'm trying to find trying to find the tangent line. So I'm trying to find a, a line. Um, and so the first, the first thing is to remember what does it mean to find a, a line? So, so what numbers do I need um, to determine a line? And there's a lot of answers to this question. Uh, for example, an answer that is, but some answers are better than others for, for this. Like Pascal is saying what I was about to say, you need two points. If you have two points, you have a line. Um, the thing is, I don't, I don't think the easiest thing for me to get here are two points. Um, you see can lie to find the tangent, right. But I'm just asking in general, a random line, how do I communicate to you what, which line I'm talking about. So slope, but not just the slope. If I, if I tell you that the slope is uh, zero, there's a lot of lines with slope zero. For example, if I give you two points, there's only one line through these two points. But if I give you the slope, there's a lot of lines with that slope. So it's the slope and something else. And there's well, more than one answer to something else. So what is it? Why intercept? So I'm talking about a line. So I don't know what the second line of a line is. Gavin said y intercept, which is definitely a correct answer. If I knew the slope and I know what the height of this point over here is, this is the y intercept, I would definitely know the line. So that's true, correct, not very convenient because there's something, something else that's better, um, namely looking at this point. Uh, because I already, this line, I may know not much about it, but I know one point. Um, so if, if the, um, remember, this I'm sure you've seen at some points in your life. If the slope, for example, if I give some coordinates to the point, I can give an equation. If 
the equation of the line is um, looks like this, and you could solve for you could solve for y here, of course, or for x. Who cares? <clears throat> Um, and from here, for example, you could, if you knew the y-intercept, if you knew the, if you knew the, this equation, you could get the y-intercept easily. Or vice versa, if you know y-intercept, you could get the point easily. The point is, it's easier for me to get the point. If, if I call this A, this point is, this is in the graph, so it's just plugging in the function. So the question is how to find the slope. Um, Often, I feel like when we're doing derivatives, where the question is finding the slope. That's what a derivative is. Um, we we focus so much on finding the slope just because it's way harder than finding the point that we forget that you know a line is not just a slope. A line is not just a number. It's a it's a slope and a point. Okay, uh, well that's gonna be it. That's my time. So I'm gonna stick here for another hour because um, it's my office hours right now.